No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and today it is the big one. The one that everyone's been waiting all year long for. Possibly the most anticipated video uh, on the whole of YouTube, uh, to the best of my knowledge. That's right my friends, it's the top 10 gins of 2021. Now it's been a bit of a turbulent year this year, much like last year. We're up, we're down with the whole COVID thing and it's been pretty difficult for everyone but one constant as i said last year one constant thing you can rely on in your lives is old freeman will be here making two 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 top quality gin videos a week whether you like it or not but before we get stuck in i have to once again thank some of my wonderful generous and selfless viewers for joining my patrons so i need to say a huge thank you to annalise bowen thank you very much annalise mike tripico thank you mike and of course mariana kump as well each and every one of you are now official supporters of the show i am forever in your debt and i salute every last one of you so let's crack on with this year's 2021 top gins hang on a minute we can't start until the uh, uh, phone cover falls over so i'll just give the desk a quick hammer well i tell you what my uh, uh phone cover placing skills have increased dramatically because i'll tell you what that is structurally sound it's not going over today isn't it i'll start it i'll just push it there we go the top 10 uh gins of 2021 here you go number 10 so in at number 10 now i usually have them up ready on the desk to go here but this year i'm gonna uh, reveal them from my magic sack of gin i've got beneath that sounds disgusting from my mysterious gin receptacle down it's not much better really from my box of gin down here under the table that's all right we'll get away with that and in at number 10 is <whistles> top sound effects as always it is my good old friend indigo which of course as you may remember was made by a mr snoop dog and when this first came out when it was first announced i kind of thought oh man this is like the ultimate gimmick isn't it you know a lot of celebrities are cashing in and making their own gin these days and i thought you know it looks cool it's always going to look cool if it's made by snoop dog the bottle's awesome but i thought it was just could be a bit of a a huge gimmick but i was damn wrong my friends it's basically it's just like a party in a bottle, which is kind of what you'd imagine if it's coming from Snoop Dogg. And it kind of goes against what you're expecting with this, because it's a kind of a purpley bottle, a nice sort of indigo bottle, but as soon as you smell it, it's just kind of bags and bags of strawberry led gin goodness. And to be honest, with the smell, you mostly get the strawberry, and it's like really strong, concentrated, a bit like the beef eater strawberry. I always point over there, it's not actually over there, which is fair enough. You know, there are loads of strawberry gins out there, but once you taste it, it kind of becomes way more multi layered. There's like essence of like citrus and orange and almost kind of tropicaliness about it as well. And it was just kind of a a bit of a a bit of a journey in itself not much going on in the way of juniper but to be honest a lot of american gins don't have so much juniper in them and but to be honest sometimes you just kind of have to get off the juniper the high juniper horse and just think you know what it's a nice bit of fun and i really enjoy it so that is definitely definitely welcome in my top 10 and, the, and what a way to start it off as well number nine okay we're off and running now in at number nine is this little fellow i'm going to abandon the sound effect because it just sounds completely sh this one is Peaky Blinders Gin. Now, again, much like with Snoop Dogg, I thought this was going to be a bit of a gimmick. You know, playing off the back of the popular TV show. It's probably like, much like that Downton Abbey gin we had, which was a, a playoff of the TV show. It wasn't very good. However, this was a massive, massive surprise. It was a perfectly crafted, kind of a core gin, but with kind of a beautiful kind of warm sort of humming sort of um sort of nice what's that a nice sort of velvety a velvety brown sort of spice to it and as you can see you can really judge one of my gins by how much is left in the bottle and me and Narissa have smashed through this i kind of when i come to the end of a bottle of gin i kind i kind of sort of stop drinking it because i'm reluctant to get rid of it i want to always know i've got some there if i want some so that's been sort of languishing there for a few months now but that is an excellent excellent core gin and it actually reminded me a little bit of the uh, top gin of 2019 which was brokers up there and that is a really high benchmark to set but i actually think it went a little bit further so imagine brokers with a little bit more depth of flavor and a few bags more extra spice and you kind of got what this gin is about so that one is definitely definitely welcome at number nine in my top 10 and i think you all love it number eight 
And in at number eight, one of my favourite and guilty, not guilty pleasure, it's, a, it's an unguilty pleasure. What's the opposite of guilty? An innocent pleasure, an open and out there pleasure, which I am not afraid to uh, share with the world. I'll just tell you what the gin is. It is none other than Boodle's Rhubarb and Strawberry Gin. Now they've written that, this is the second strawberry gin we've got in the top, um, in the top 10. And I don't usually put the fruity gins in here, but this year they were so good. And this one particularly is the best. I love a pink gin, as you know. I love a strawberry gin. This is, out of all the ones I've tried, by far and away, the best out of any of them. And I guess it's the addition of the rhubarb in there, because not only you've got that sort of concentrated strawberry goodness, the rhubarb gives it kind of a, a sharpness to it, a little bit of a zing in there, and it is just heavenly. I can drink this neat, which I very rarely do, but with a gin and tonic poured really strong, it's just an absolute delight. And the real benchmark, which is very, very rare for me, is this is the only gin, because I, I never buy uh, a, a second bottle of the same gin. If I bought a gin, once it's gone, that's it, because what's the point of me buying, uh, buying it again, because I've got so many. However, I can reveal to you that this was the only one that I bought again. This, as you can see, it's quite a full bottle. I, I smashed through it so quickly, I just really enjoyed it, and I bought a second bottle. So that is high praise indeed from me, and that is why it is in my top 10 today. Number seven. And in at number seven, I'm not going down to my gym box today because it is already on the shelves behind me. And it is, of course, the Mermaid Gin. Possibly the great, oh, I've got a bit of condensation on the bottle there. <laughs> Due to the fact that I work in a freezing cold studio. In fact, it's just yesterday I was gonna film this video, but it, it was so cold, there was literally ice on the desk. I know I have filmed like that before, but I thought I just couldn't do it. So today it's, it's risen just above freezing. So uh, I, I'm powering on for your, for your comfort, ease, Enjoyment. Anyway, I digress. This, as I said, is one of the possibly the best looking bottle we've had on the show and one of the mo my favouritest gins. It's kind of, it's distilled in the Isle of Wight, which is a uh, island just off the south coast of England. And I don't know, it's something about the ones that are distilled by the seaside. They kind of bottle a little bit of that fresh sea air in them. And this one certainly has. It's got kind of a, it's kind of a sort of a, a natural fresh kind of sweetness to it. It's a sweetness, but it doesn't taste artificial. It tastes of it's grown from the ground. And I really, really like that. It tastes like you're sort of drinking something that's really luscious and good for you. And um, not, not to mention, of course, the fact it's got a real thick, fog, heavy juniper base to it. And I do like a big, strong bit of juniper every now and then. The strongest one we had was uh, Brooklyn up there, and that was absolutely awesome. By the way, you'll notice when I tapped that last time, the uh, badge fell off. I managed to glue it back on, you'll be uh, relieved to hear, I'm sure. But this one absolutely blew me away. And in fact, it was so good, I put it on uh, my special top shelf here, which is reserved for my uh, kind of, kind of all-time favorite gins. And one of the most unique things about it is there's a slight, slight salinity to it. Just, 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 just tiny bit, a bit of that kind of sea saltiness, but only just a tiny like 1%, but just enough to give it a little bit of a sort of a quirky, more interesting edge. And that's why, my friends, it is most definitely home in my top 10. That's either a rusty bicycle going past or a, a dog that's being maltreated. Number six. So then, number six, and it is another fruity one. It is an almost empty bottle of the Tarquin's, what is it, Cornish Sunshine and Blood Orange Gin. And this one, I've, I've always got a lot of time for Tarquin's, and, but this one particularly really blew me away. It also blew my girlfriend Nerissa away because she has literally smashed through that bottle almost single-handedly. In fact, I had to sneak it out the house surreptitiously without her knowing, lest she uh, attack me. And it was just, just, amazing. It was an orange gin in the way that no orange gin had done it before. It was kind of a warm, sweet, but bitter kind of um, orangey flavour with huge depths of flavour. It's just it's kind of just oh, went straight down to the core. And they call it uh, Cornish Sunshine and Blood Orange Gin. And I can totally see why, because it literally tastes like sunshine. It tastes like pure summer in a glass. And that's why it is most definitely, as I said before, I don't usually have too many fruity gins in the top 10, but there were such strong contenders this year. That's why this little fella has muscled its way into number six. Number five. And in at number five today, it's a lovely little Irish gin which goes by the name of Feckin' Gin, so it does. And not only does it give me an excuse to do me lovely little Irish accent, this little blighter was one of my favourite gins of the year. It was just... 
I thought it might be a bit of a gimmick, obviously because of the name, if you don't know what feck means, feck is a sort of a substitution for the more unpleasant uh, uh, swear word, uh, but uh, I'll drop the accent for a second. And it was first coined in the 90s sitcom Father Ted, which is about three Irish priests, and they always use the word feck instead of the word, well, we know the other word. Not only is it a beautifully blended core gin, but they've kind of pushed lemons to the forefront, so it's kind of lemony citrus forward, but they've kind of off, which would be great in itself, but they've kind of off set that with a kind of a cakey cookie dough kind of element in there which with the lemon just works absolutely awesome it's kind of a sort of a lemon drizzle cakey time kind of theme and i i just i've enjoyed it so much as you can see there's hardly anything left in this bottle and that is most definitely welcome and one if you haven't seen before you should definitely try because it's awesome and it is definitely worth a place in the top 10. Number four. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. And in at number four, one of the most awesome gins in many, many ways of the year is, of course, Larios 12, all the way from Spain. Now, if you're not familiar with the Larios range, they're basically extremely well-priced gins. I can't remember how much this one, but their core gin was about nine pounds here in the UK, which is extraordinarily cheap, which was fine. It was kind of a no-nonsense, sort of no-frills sort of gin. However, they bought this one out, and I think it's around about the 15, 16 pound mark. Still extremely cheap, but it's basically, I think it, it's called Larios 12. Well, I know it's called Larios 12 because it has 12 botanicals, and it is mass. It's like a citrus jamboree in there. Every citrus fruit you can think of is literally sort of firing and cracking and whizzing and banging and it actually put me in mind of and is very similar to the old the almighty Tanqueray 10 up there which we know is in some countries around the world which my viewers have told me is extremely expensive I mean it's extremely good but extremely expensive so really if you're seeing that in your country and it is as you as I say on the higher end of the price um, market then this if, if, if you're not prepared to pay that get yourself some of this because it's basically very very similar but for a fraction of the price so it is a stupendously good gin for basic you know sort of basic standard low down gin I don't, I don't know what I'm saying at the lower end of the price range is what I'm trying to say and that's what I've said before you do not have to spend a lot of money to get really good gin there are gins out there that are truly exceptional that are truly affordable as well and this one is def def definitely <laughs> so much so much so it may be stuttering the word definitely definitely want to go for and very at home and a very worthy place in the higher end of my top 10. number three so then we get into the business end now and this little fella was going to be the number one for a while but it just got nudged back as the year went on and it is isle of harris now this beyond having an extraordinarily beautiful bottle as you can see this one again this was obviously distilled in the uh, well the isle of harris which if you're not familiar with the uh, isles of scotland it is basically one of the islands just off the coast of scotland somewhere i'm not sure exactly where but somewhere around there just have a look on a map you'll find it and this one blew me away as you can see it's another one where i'm hanging on to the dregs there i'm loath to get ready because it was a beautifully sort of extremely well balanced core gin but it much in the same way as the mermaid captured that essence of salinity and uh, fresh sea air the Isle of Harris took it to another level. It's kind of up to that. It's almost as if they've distilled it in a little bit of sea water or something because it's just a, a real noticeable, a quite discernible kind of salinity, almost saltiness about it. Not quite bordering into the savoury gins, but kind of maybe sort of dipping one toe in that direction. It's super fresh and fragrant and a lovely waft of juniper in there. It's, it's kind of like you've sort of stood, I said in my video uh, when I first reviewed it, it's like you're standing on the rocks by the sea and a wave's gone, poof, poof, and you've just gone, Ah, oh, all that sea air and kind of salty goodness and everything. It just feels awesome. And and obviously, and because it's got an incredible... And they've kind of sort of recreated that, I think, the sort of the motion of the waves with the bottle as well. So this one, as I say, it was almost number one for a while and it could easily have been. It's so tricky when you get to this end of the top 10. But today, it has taken the number three spot in my top 10. Number two. So then, here we go. Two more to go. And again, this one for a while was going to be number one, but it was just so tricky when you get to this end of the top ten. But I'll tell you what it is. It is James Gin by the from the Top Gear presenter and the Grand Tour presenter, of course, uh, James May. And again, like lots of gins in this top ten, 
it could have been a gimmick. I thought it was going to be a gimmick. It's another celebrity endorsed gin. Well, in fact, a celebrity made gin. I know he had a big hand in making this. And James May, I know, is a big fan of gin. He's been drinking gin for a long, long time. And he's really passionate about it. And he's clearly spent a lot of time with the distillers and put a lot of thought and his own love into this. And honestly, it really, really shows the combination of flavors. One of the most main things I love about it is the uniqueness. I don't think I've ever heard of parsnip being used in a gin before. Never, never, ever. And to be honest, I was a bit skeptical because I'm not really a fan of parsnips. However, the way they've blended it in there, when they've offset it against the kind of the Asian spices as well, which never in a million years I would have thought to put together, it just not only works, but creates a kind of magic. The parsnip is kind of both weird yet wonderful at the same time. And it just blew me away when I first tried it. And I just absolutely love it. So oh, I feel really bad that it didn't get to hit the number one spot, but it, oh, whatever you think, get out there. If you haven't yet, try it because it is something truly unique and truly special. Number one. So gin lovers, so, 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 here we are, number one spot. As I've said, it was a really, really tri uh, tricky and difficult decision this year, but I had to come to a decision. And the one I've gone for, most of you probably won't be too surprised, it is, of course, the High Clare Castle Gin. High Clare Castle, of course, being the actual building where they made Downton Abbey. And again, it's becoming a, a kind of a common theme in this top 10. Again, I did wonder if it might be a bit of a gimmick, much like the actual Downton Abbey gin was, which I didn't like at all. However, how? Ever. I knew it must have been quite good. There must have been something about it because it was being recommended by more people than usual, more people than were recommending anything else. And my goodness, I can see why. It's ultimately a core gin. There's nothing weird and wonderful. I don't think we could ever have a novelty gin or a fruity gin really for the number one. I think it's got to be a core essence gin. And this most definitely is. It's simple at its heart. It hasn't got any strange out there, weird and wonderful botanicals. It's just got the core ones. And this is very often, this very often makes the best gin. Like last year, the top, uh, the top space went to number three, which only had six botanicals, but used them very, very expertly. And High Clare most certainly, certainly does that. Again, possibly one of the best bottles we've seen all year. And again, I sometimes get a bit suspicious when I see, suspicious when I see a, a good bottle. I think, are they hiding something rubbish inside? But they are most definitely not. And the thing that struck me about it most, the kind of the, the perfect balancing of all the sort of the core gin flavours, the Holy Trinity, and a beautiful sort of delic strong but delicate kind of waft, uh, waft of juniper in there all delivered. This was the thing that uh, sort of made it stand apart from the other gins this year for me. It, the way it delivers it in like a silky, smooth way. It's just like silk gliding across the tongue and sort of massaging you and just sort of slithering down the throat. That doesn't sound particularly uh, pleasant, but trust me, it is. As I said, it's got the core botanicals, but slightly sort of tweaked. So it's got lime flower in there. It's got orange peel. It's also, which I really like when used very, very sparingly, just a dab of, is lavender. Lavender is a really powerful flavor, but over it can easily overcome a gin, but just a little spot of it in there like which gins have done it before steve steve the bartender's gin threefold gin up there that had a touch of lavender in it and it makes a gin just gives it something a little bit special and just kind of a touch of magic in there and i love it and all those things coming together and they just kind of click and work wonderfully and it's truly a joy to behold and a joy to drink so that's why this year the number one spot goes to the high clare castle gin so guys, I hope you've enjoyed that today. Again, I always say, you know, some people always get upset because I didn't put that one in, didn't put that one in. It was so difficult and I just had to sort of make some really difficult decisions. There are lots of other gins which should have deserved to be on there, but you know, at the end of the day, I had to make some decisions and I made them. At the end of the day, it's all subjective. It's only my top 10. Actually, you know what? No, I'm, I'm, the power's gone to my head. It is the top 10. It is definitive. It's not subjective and uh, everyone must agree with me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Got a bit carried away there. But look, I hope you have enjoyed it no matter what. If you have, don't, as always, if you haven't already, then so please subscribe to my channel. Press the little like button on this video if you enjoyed it. And indeed the bell icon so you get notified, notified, when, my, notified, notified when my new videos come out. And if you want to support the show, like good old Annalise Bowen, Mike Trippick, and uh, Miriana Kump did, then 
head over please to my Patreon page or indeed press the join button below this video to join my YouTube members. But until next time guys, you all know the drill. Take care, stay safe, thank you for all your support this year and of course, keep drinking the gin.